Hi guys! I've got a great little project for you with the fall is here and Christmas will be here before we know it. I thought it'd be a great idea to do something really simple to dress up the holidays. A pretty little ornament or a decoration or even a place card for your festive table. This is going to be a fun one. It's not difficult. It's ideal for a beginner. Um, it's also very pretty and uh, a little on the elegant side, which I kind of like. I always like things to have a little elegant twist to them. Uh, but before we get into it, we have to talk about our winner from last week's video, and that is, drum roll please, Edward Hensley. Edward, please message me with your shipping information so that we can get you your five-piece Dynasty brush set out to you as soon as possible and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button guys and uh, get notified about everything that's coming up in the future. We have a new midweek video every Thursday, no makeup Thursday, and we have a live class available on my Facebook page at Tracy Moreau Live on Saturdays. So don't forget to check that out too. They also will be put on our YouTube channel. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you know when it's posted. All right, I think we're about ready to get started. So this is the piece we're going to work on. And although it doesn't look like it, there is some stenciling involved and I've done that on the back just to give it a festive feel. The little to and from, because it is a gift tag. And then a, a nice piece of ribbon, a little decorative painting with these berries and a little greenery, and then this lettering that kind of looks like it's chalk. So this is a really simple one. Um, the pattern actually has three different designs in it. We have the uh, We Wish You Joy and the Merry Christmas and Making Spirits Bright. So all three of these designs are in the pattern. But this is the one we're going to work on today. And now the process is really simple. I'm a firm believer that you have to finish things back and front. There's nothing worse than picking up something that's beautifully painted and discovering that there's gobs of paint sticking on the back and nothing is finished and nothing has that nice professional look. And it's very easy to get that look with just a little bit of effort. So this is how it's done. So this is the back of my piece. I've already traced on the to and the from, and I'm going to choose a stencil. I went with a snowflake, but I wanted a larger pattern. I don't want a ton of it on this. So I'm just going to position my stencil so that one of the snowflakes is on there. And I'm going to load up my stencil brush. Now, I'm not using white. For this I'm using a color called sand gray and the reason for that is that I don't want a sharp contrast I want a contrast I just don't want it to be too sharp and harsh so the brush is nearly dry and I'm just going to stencil that on there looks like I need a little more color So nice light touch on that surface. Circular fashion, change directions frequently. And there we go, let's have a look. Oh, I like that. And then I'm going to move this one. Notice I never have them completely on the surface. I just find it has a nicer effect if it goes off the page a little. I'm going to pick up a little more gray. Don't forget, blot it on your paper towel or your shop towel. That will take off any excess paint so that you don't have color bleeding under your stencil. It's much easier to control the color that way. And it's so easy to put more color on. It is not so easy to take the color off. And I don't want this fully opaque, so I get that nice soft look. Ah, there we go. I'm going to pull, oh, perhaps this one. I think this one would be nice on here. I keep sliding out of the shot here, folks, sorry. Put one more snowflake on here, rule of threes. I do like to have the three. 
elements, then you're not having to constantly adjust. There we go. So uh, check again. Yep, I like that. So there we have it. Our back is almost finished. So I'm going to switch over to my, this is a 10 aught rigger or a liner, a very fine liner. And I'm going to get into this a little bit of warm white and just print this lettering. The nice part about this is that it's supposed to look as if it was handwritten. So you don't really have to be utterly perfect with this lettering. And you just stroke it in. I like this little series of dots. It just, it has a much looser feel to it. And you can just do that by applying little tiny dots with the tip of the brush. Like so. This is the kiss method. Just keep things simple. Okay. So I'm going to take a moment to dry this just so I don't smear it. It doesn't take long, just a couple of seconds. There we go. So this part is complete. I kept that nice, loose, and very soft stenciling, and I used a gray instead of white so that I didn't get a harsh contrast. I just wanted it to have that soft look. So now we're going to move on to doing this part. Now, I've already base coated my leaves, and the color that I used is forest green. And I've also base coated the berries. Now, these berries have got a coat of sand gray. Now I chose sand gray instead of white because I wanted these berries to be nice and bright, but I also didn't want to have to put three or four coats on. If I used a pure white, then the red would have been more pinky orange instead of this vibrant red. So I'm going to pick up my, I'm using a zero rigger for this. I'm just picking up a little of the, This is Red Alert, which is this nice bright red. And I'm going to put a coat of that, one coat of that Red Alert over top of that gray. And look how that color stays nice and bright. If I went with a white, I would probably have to recoat to get that nice vibrant red whereas that gray is subdued enough and yet light enough so that it gives us this nice bright bold red and another quick coat over here these work up really really quick take your time I want to show you a little trick for round things and as soon as I finish base coating that, I'll show you. When you're tracing a line drawing, especially something like this, berries don't look right if they're not round. They tend to get a little wonky and then they don't look nice. And I have a trick for getting them nice and crisp and keep that nice round shape while you're tracing. It's not rocket science, but it's a handy one of those, well, duh, why didn't I think of that moment? Okay, so that, I'm gonna give that a second to dry and let's talk about tracing this. So here's our line drawing. Now, when you're tracing circles, if you freehand them, they never come out quite as clean and as round as you would like. So that's when a tool like this comes in handy. Because there's multiple sizes of circles on this, this is from Westcott. Uh, you can adjust, go through till you find a circle that fits the one you're trying to trace. Place it over it and then trace it this way. And then that way you get these nice, clean, perfectly round berries. 
This is a really handy tool to have in your paint box for a variety of things. And there's different shapes. You can get squares, you can get uh, triangles, but having this nice little circle maker is a fabulous idea and it saves you a ton of time and it helps give you nice crisp circles. So I'm going to give that a quick dry. fast and easy. So I'm going to move the stencil brush. We're done with that. I have a trick for floating. Floating, there's a reason why they would call it the F word. Floating is one of those things that takes time to master. It takes time to get the right balance of water in your brush, the right amount of color in your brush. I know you can struggle with this. A lot of painters do and for quite a while. I have a trick. I use one of these cellulose kitchen sponges and I get it wet. So it should be just wet, not dripping. I squeeze all of the water or as much of the water out of it as I can get. So when I'm going to load my brush, I just touch it to the sponge and it will remove excess, but not all of the water from your brush. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of black with that red alert. And it's just a brush mix. I essentially want a really dark red. And I blend it out well. And I'm going to shade the bottom of these berries. Just like so. And it's a simple, small float across the bottom of the berry. Don't putz with it, but it is that simple. Simple little float on the bottom of the berry. And it's a brush mix of that, that lamp black and a little bit of red alert. And you're done. And you'll find by using this sponge method that you'll have much better control over how much water is in your brush. I find a lot of the time using paper towel, it simply pulls too much water out. So a wet surface like this sponge works very, very well to help you get that balance right. So now I'm going to add a highlight to the tip of these leaves. And I'm using the uh, green tree, which is this pretty green I'm going to blend it out well. I've got still got black in my brush. Give it a quick wash. There we go. That's much better. So the highlight is going to go just on the tip of the leaf, and you don't have to fuss with it much. It's not even a really pretty float, but just a little highlight at the tip of the leaves. Keep it simple, don't, don't fuss with it too much. It's just to get that highlight on the point. You notice I haven't picked up any more water. It's because there's lots of water in this brush. It's a rudimentary float and it, all it, we're doing is just putting a little light at the tip of that leaf. Nothing fancy. Go do this one. And my brush is finally running out of water. So back into, touch the surface. Easy peasy. 
This is not a difficult piece to paint. Just have to take your time on a few of the elements. And the one that needs your attention is, quite honestly, this highlight on these leaves because the contrast is what's going to make these pop off this black background. strengthen this one because I did put a lot on there. There we go. So now that I have that highlight on there, we are going to intensify that a little bit. I'm going to use that 10 knot liner or 10 knot rigger, whichever one you're working with, and thin out a little bit of that green tree with some water. And on the tip, starting at the tip of the leaf, you're going to put just a fine line on either side of the leaf, just like that. And this just cleans up that edge and gives you a nice bright punch. And that's that contrast we were talking about. So if your float isn't perfect at the tip of that leaf, this little line is going to take care of a lot of that. This cleans up a multitude of sins. Oops. A little more. This one is not as bright as I'd like. There we go. And now we're going to do that center line, that stem. So I'm going to press down so that it has a little bit of a, a base. And then I'm going to pull that line along like so. And then a center line on each of the leaves, starting at the base of the leaf. That simple. Now there's still a lot of the graphite lines showing we're going to clean that up when we're done. So I'm going to do the same thing to this one. It's these little details that make the difference on something like this. When you need, especially on a black background, you need to have some nice contrast, but it can't be so high that it's in your face, but it has to be high enough to make the design stand out. And this little line is all this one really needs to do just that. Let's come in here and I'll press down to get that bottom of the stem up onto the point to give us a nice fine line to do this. And then that line in the center of the leaf. Easy. So to finish out these berries and these, this greenery, all we need is a nice little highlight of white on each of those berries. I'm going to do that by loading the liner with a fair amount of white on the tip. And just at the upper portion of each berry, I'm going to put in a little dot of white for a highlight. Really simple makes those berries pop. So now all we have is this lettering and that is so simple to do. I'm going to use my zero rigger for this one and this warm white. Now the trick to this one is I want this to kind of look chalky so I'm going to add a little more water 
to my paint. And I'm using this rigger because look how wide I can splay that brush. I can get up to a quarter inch wide using that. So this one is simple. Get that chisel edge on the edge, top edge of that letter, pull it down. And as you come to the narrow part of the brush, pull up, or the narrow part of the letter, I should say, pull up onto that chisel edge until it comes to that point. Now you're going to see some brush marks in it, and that's okay. Let's press down. See how that brush will open up nicely for you till it fills the space, and then pull it up on the chisel edge. Press down till it opens up and pull up on the chisel edge. I like to get my paint a little thicker than milk and then press that brush to get that chisel edge. See how it squares up. Oops, this one's a little wider at the top than, there we go. Well, this one's gonna take a little more work. That's okay. I don't want these letters completely opaque kind of want them to have that dry chalk like look to them. So I'll rinse this one out and I'm going to switch back to that tenot. And this is where all those little fine lines get done. So I'm going to start with the Y, press down, pull it across and I stop just short of the letter and then pick it up over here and pull it around. Top of this O is giving me grief. There we go. <laughs> I kind of like that dry look. It works for this because it's supposed to look like chalk. So, And then you can just print out the last of that using that liner. Make sure that you've got lots of paint in the brush. This is great practice with a liner brush. Learning how much pressure you can put on it to get the lines that you want. And there we go. Now, I'm going to give that a second to dry, but I like to take my ribbon and I cut it at an angle and then you can use either a lighter or a candle just to fuse the ends so that they don't fray. But because this one is fairly wide, fold it in half and fold it over itself again until you have this little nubbin. And I'm going to put this on by pushing through from the back. And then, and I messed it up because I'm supposed to go the other way. So again, I'm gonna fold it this way fold it that and back on itself so then I have that little nubbin. I'm going to go through from the front <laughs> and then open up the, the ribbon this way. Slide the two tails through and this gives you sort of a Windsor knot look at the top of the ornament. 
So give this a chance to dry really well and then you can take your eraser and clean up all of the graphite lines. When I'm working on a black background, this is the eraser I recommend. This is a Factus Black 18. The reason I recommend this is because one, it will take off any graphite lines without smearing them all over the place, but it also does not polish that background. So you won't get shiny spots on your black background. I highly recommend these for a variety of things, but particularly for things with a black background. Now, this is a really simple project. It works up quickly. It's very pretty, has a nice elegant look to it. To finish it off, like I do with most of my ornaments, I really love these gold paint pens and these work so well. So I just take my pen and go down the edge all around the outside so that it leaves a thin bead of gold on the face of the piece that I'm working on. You don't need a really thick one, but a nice little touch of gold is very pretty, especially on festive stuff and Christmas ornaments and whatnot. So there we have it. So this one will have to sit for a little bit to dry so that it's completely dry. And then we can clean up all of the graphite lines and all of the, the things that require a little cleaning up. I really love how these look. Um, you don't have to do them on these great big tags either. You can do the same technique for place cards like this little one on the smaller three inch tags. They work just as well and they have a really nice look to them as well. There we go. Easy peasy. It works up fast. They're really, really pretty. Very, very elegant. Thanks for joining me today. These were great fun. I enjoyed doing them and I hope you enjoy doing them too. I will have a giveaway for this week. I have a great little stencil set. Snowflakes, who knew? <laughs> so that you'll have something to decorate either your gift tags or your place card settings or these great ornaments. You can look for the surface at Viking Woodcrafts. They have it available on their website. Comes with a nice little block stand so you can stand them up as an ornament as opposed to hanging them. So there's all kinds of things you can do with this particular one. Try it out on some wall, on um, watercolor paper or cardstock or on almost any surface, wood, paper, what have you. This little design works up very quickly, very easily. You don't need to have a huge skill set to do this. Join me again next week for our No Makeup Thursday. <laughs> and uh, I hope you have a great week. I'll see you on Saturday on Tracy Moreau live on Facebook for another class. We're doing a great Halloween piece Hopefully I'll see you there. See you again soon. Stay safe. Love ya.